Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Grace. My name is Scott Painter and I serve as the Vicar of Grace. And it's a joy to welcome you all together this morning on the third Sunday after Epiphany for worship in this online space. If you're visiting with us for the first or second time and we haven't gotten to know one another yet, let me invite you to find in the chat column that runs alongside this video, a link to our online welcome card where you can let us know you were here today and let us know how to reach back out to you and share more with you about grace and hopefully learn more about the journey that brought you to worship with us. For now, let's take a moment and quiet our hearts and prepare for worship. Oh, <laughs> 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most Most merciful merciful God, God, we confess confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, word, and and deed, by by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory Glory to to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. We will say the psalm in unison. For God alone my soul is silenced, waits, Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put yourself in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree, are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in exhortation. In robbery, take no empty pride. From wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. The Lord's words came to Jonah a second time. Get up and go into Nineveh, that great city, and declare against it the proclamation that I am commanding you. And Jonah got up and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's word. Now Nineveh Nineveh was indeed an enormous city, a three days walk. Jonah started into the city, walked one day, and cried out, just 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on mourning clothes from the greatest of them to the least significant. God saw what they were doing, that they had ceased their evil behavior. So God stopped planning to destroy them and he didn't do it. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee announcing God's good news, saying, Now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. As Jesus passed alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon and Andrew, throwing fishing nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him. After going a little farther, he saw James and John, Zebedee's sons, in their boat repairing the fishing nets. At that very moment, he called them. They followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired workers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Jonah, Nineveh, and a merciful God. Today, the story of Jonah is calling out to us. It's a fantastical tale, one that many, if not all of us, know well. It is a, an epic myth of calling and failure and catastrophe and repentance and happily ever after, kind of. We have the prophet Jonah of the people of Israel, and God calls Jonah to go to the people of Nineveh, Nineveh, the capital of an outsider empire, a threat to God's people. God, Yahweh, calls Jonah to go to Nineveh to take news of a warning and of a promise that God will have mercy if the people of Nineveh will repent of their evil ways. Jonah immediately turns and goes the other way. He goes to Tarshish, or at least tries to, gets on a boat, and a great tempest comes upon that boat in the middle of the sea. Eventually, Jonah insists the only way to save the other folks in the boat is for him to be thrown overboard. They throw him overboard. And he's swallowed in a giant fish and spends a lot of time in that fish thinking about uh, the error of his ways until Jonah gets an opportunity to be spit 
out of the belly of the whale and to be sent to uh, another opportunity to go to the people of Nineveh with the news of God's warning and God's promised mercy if they will repent and change their minds. Jonah goes again. He goes the right direction this time. Goes to the people of Nineveh and gives them the warning that God has sent him to deliver. And the people repent. They change their ways. It's an amazing thing. Uh, Not expected. Jonah's angry. Jonah's angry. He's angry that God would show mercy. The same God who just showed mercy to Jonah, who disobeyed and went the other way. God has showed mercy to the people of Nineveh, and Jonah is angry. Jonah's angry. Why is Jonah angry? He must not believe that the people of Nineveh deserve the mercy that God has given, that God has shown. I wonder for us today, first of all, how is God calling us to share the good news of his mercy to people in our lives, in our world? This world is in desperate need of mercy. We are torn apart by our disagreements, by our divisions, How are we called to proclaim the mercy of God? And where are we called to go with that proclamation? I also wonder if we might be the people of Nineveh. I also wonder if that word might be coming to us to change our ways in some some way. The picture we have in the Gospel of Mark today is of Jesus' first movement into his public ministry. Jesus shows up and says, now is the time. Change your hearts and minds and put your trust in God. The kingdom has come. God's reign, God's good way, God's dream has come into the world to come true. The word of God's mercy comes to us, comes to all the world. I wonder if we believe everyone is worthy of it. I wonder if we would rejoice if everyone who heard it responded with repentance and received God's favor, God's forbearance, God's mercy. There's an important word to us today because we are drawn into these battles of deciding who is in and who is out. We're drawn into these battles of deciding who is worthy of grace, of forgiveness. We're drawn into these battles of deciding who is human. And the example we have in the story of Jonah and the word we receive from the mouth of Jesus is that anyone who turns and trusts in the good news that God is for us and not against us, that God is with us and not apart from us, has not turned his face from us, that if we'll hear that word and receive, it is the power to transform this world for good. So I wonder today if we would think about our own worthiness of God's mercy, if we would ponder the power of receiving it, and I wonder if we would meditate on the mercy of God and ask God to help us rejoice when someone comes to receive it. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray as Christ taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together we pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen.
We pray especially for John, Marcia, Hardy, Bob, Malcolm, Diane, Alex, Nancy, Vion, Mary Lou, Dan, Fred, Marlene, Stephanie, Eddie and Astrid, and for Chris Coates serving in the military overseas, and for those we now name. We pray for all those in government, especially our new president and vice president, and for our nation during this time of division. We offer thanksgiving, especially for the daughters of the king. We pray for all who have died, especially those we now name. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, we your unworthy servants, servants give, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
But once again, good morning, everybody. Have just a couple of announcements to share with you. One is that we do have our annual parish meeting today at 1130 on Zoom. Uh, so we will move from these announcements into coffee hour. And then there's a separate link for a different Zoom meeting uh, for the annual meeting at 1130. I encourage you to hop on a few minutes early and make sure the technology is working for you. Make sure you're able to register. Uh, receive the link through your email after you register and then join the meeting through that link. And uh, the link to register is found in the chat column with these announcements. So uh, if you misplaced your grace line, just look at the chat column and you'll be able to, uh, to find your way to register for the meeting today. Another reminder is that for the remainder of January, we will continue to uh, not have our four o'clock uh, in-person service. Uh, we have many members of our community who are finding their way to a uh, vaccine for the uh, coronavirus. And we have others who are uh, still lying low and waiting out uh, the, this current surge in cases. But we are taking a break uh, throughout the end of this month and we do anticipate resuming that outside service uh, on February 7th. Well, I look forward to seeing you all in coffee hour and, uh, and in the annual meeting. And uh, thanks for being here today. Bye friends.